Hey, my name is Will Newsom, and you're listening to Tech Start. In this show, we explore the realities of changing careers and getting into tech. I know how scary it can be, and that's why we created this show to support you on our journey. I recently graduated from a data science bootcamp. Well, let me tell you something. I haven't found a job in tech yet, but that's because I'm not desperate for one. I'm employed at the time of this recording, and I'm working in a field closely related to tech. So I guess you could say that I'm in a pretty lucky position where I can be selective about my new role and don't have to rush into things. What I'm looking for is more opportunities, better hours, remote work, and the ability to spend more time with my family. Many people go into tech because they feel unfulfilled in their work. You can even be well-established in your current career, but finding a more junior position in tech provides you with other opportunities your previous career couldn't. That's the case for our guest, Isabel, who found what she was doing at work was more important than her title. In this episode, we'll explore what a job in tech can give to a person beyond a bigger paycheck or a more flexible lifestyle. I've worked for over... 20 years, nearly 25 years in uh, in fashion. I'm approaching 50 <laughs> this year, so that's quite a, a big threshold. So I've always followed my passions. And basically, when I started to work like a long time ago in my, in my 20s, I was passionate with fashion. It was in the 80s, 90s. I worked for uh, the, the first big company I worked f- uh, for was, was Prada. At the time with, where Mrs. Pavesi was in the company, she's a, she's a fashion uh, icon and uh, I was part of the, of the team in Paris. So that, that was really a great experience. Then the, the company I probably enjoyed the most was Burberry. I worked for seven years for Burberry. It was at the time where Angela Harrens was at the head of the company and uh, together with Christopher, that was just a magical time. The team was fantastic. I mean, obviously, it was at the time where we we boosted the business like like crazy. I was working in, in accessories, but the, the the team and the uh, the atmosphere was fantastic. So it's the one company I should uh, quote. Yes, definitely Burberry. And it's also the company that brought me to London. I fell in love with London after moving for for Burberry. So I've worked all my life with designers in um, working for fabulous brands in big teams. And that was until uh, COVID hit. When COVID hit, I was still like traveling every week, like between Madrid, Paris, and London, taking basically like uh, three flights a week, one year or south, and depending on the, the, the combinations. I, I was enjoying to a certain extent, like the, the work I was doing, but uh, COVID made me stop and just ask myself, okay, what's what am I going to do next and what do I want to do next? Because I chose to relocate in London and from there to start fresh again, either in fashion or somewhere else. And I was basically working on a small fashion project with a friend. We needed a website. That's where it all started. <laughs> basically, I got in touch with web designers, web developers. And the more I talked to those people, the more I felt really like hooked. I mean, to the point that just after a few weeks, I think. I was like saying to my friend, okay, I'm, I'm going to do the website. So I started like exploring WordPress, taking some, some online classes. And, and really, the more I digged into it, the more I, I, I felt like fascinated and interested and, and really like excited. So I really decided to <laughs> take the chance actually. And because I felt this, this kind of spark that I, I had never felt like for, um, before, like for a long time, at least I decided to, to take it seriously. So I started with online classes and sign, and finally I, uh, signed up for, for the triple 10, uh, bootcamp. And that was in the middle of COVID. So that was perfect time because I was in between jobs. And yeah, that was amazing. And the more I did it, the more I, I, I liked it. I know you said you were taking, like you were teaching yourself, like you were, you were self-taught in the beginning. Mm-hmm. What made you take the jump from being self-taught to like even thinking about joining a boot camp and paying money for it? Because you obviously taught yourself a certain amount of things. Yeah. I wanted to go in depth into things and not to stay on the surface and to grab a few bits here and there. That's how I felt because also I started by, for instance, dealing with WordPress or playing with WordPress, like to build some websites. So obviously when you, you do something like that, when you approach a field by just using a tool, you only get a certain depth of understanding of 
why everything is made a certain way. You can obviously dig into things and, and find some more information about things, but I wanted really a structured path of learning where I could go in depth and have a good base that would allow me like, to, to go further, uh, to go deeper in, in, in the areas I was interested in. And that's exactly what I found with, with Triple Ten. I really liked and loved the flexibility in the learning uh, pattern and this idea of submitting some sprints to real professionals that would give some feedback. What Isabel means here is that coding bootcamp at Triple Ten are divided into sprints. Sprints are two weeks periods of work. At the end of each sprint, a student has to submit the part of their project they've been working on for a code review. A reviewer then gets back to the student with the feedback and tips. That's the part I guess like the most. For me, it was the, the perfect combination of uh, solid knowledge combined with, with flexible uh, learning patterns. And so I really, having, and because I compared also with like other boot camps, I didn't, I didn't find the same combination anywhere else. Was the coursework difficult for you or was it kind of straightforward? I know it was challenging, but that's what I liked. I would I wouldn't have liked it if it was if it had been easy. No, 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 no. No, no, that was that was very challenging because it was it was truly a really interesting sprints. I mean, um, I, I remember at the at the beginning of the of the court of the of the year like the the tutor was saying yeah, you will see around sprint 10, 11 it starts to get a bit a bit tricky. Don't give up. So no, that that was fabulous because um, because it was challenging enough yet achievable if you if you um, if you put the energy and the, the, if you don't give up actually you you can make it. For me, doing the boot camp it was a way also to honing to honing back some freedom and to really master my time again because as i was saying like before covid i was just like traveling from one city to another i i, I was definitely not mastering anything i was just like <laughs> going where people needed me and where the the, the work was uh, required me to go but uh what i felt was was amazing chance is like by embracing this new uh, passion by following this new path like in tech I could build something that I could truly own myself. I've worked in fashion. I've always worked with, with designers, with, with aesthetic-like visions and, 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 and point of view. So for me, it felt natural to just gravitate around the design side of things. So I don't remember who, who said that, but I, I'm more like attracted by the front end of the front end, <laughs> technically. Okay. <laughs> like, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so of course, the, the back end is interesting. It's, it's playful. It's, it's building like some functions. But, but for me, there is an extra added value or added joy to build something that is aesthetically is, is pleasing to the eye. Isabel mentions here that she's big on the front end rather than the back end. If you're just starting out, it may sound a bit confusing, but don't worry, I got you. Front end is the interface of a product and what you as a user actually see when you interact with a website or an app. Back end is the server side. Users don't see it, but it's the backbone of every IT product. That's why today I, I like to work mostly with artists and with independent people who have a, also a creative vision for their own work and by partnering with them and building websites for them. I think that's where I find fulfillment and I can also like make them deliver something that they are really pleased with. How was it transitioning from, I guess, designing fashion to designing websites like how's that transition and like going back to school i guess if, if you say <laughs> <laughs> in some way the web is the new fashion mm. that, what was happening 80, <laughs> in the 80s like in the fashion world like with some some amazing like new designs and things that would surprise people and make them dream I find this same energy <laughs> in, the, in the web today and that's what I'm excited about and in terms of building, what does that mean to build a website? It, it's also um, a mix, I would say, between structure and creativity. And that's exactly the kind of mix I found also in fashion when uh, I was working with designers to build collections. Because I, I've, my experience is rooted in collection merchandising. So it's really making the link between the design and the commercial side. 
And when I build a website, it, it, there is something similar there because it's like enhancing the work or the, the value or the business idea of somebody into something that will be understandable to uh, the majority of people and to all the visitors that will go on the website. So maybe it's a bit of a stretch, but for me, there, there are some yeah. <laughs> similarities. Yeah, no, I don't think it's a stretch at all. I, I, like you, you, you articulated it very well. Obviously, like you said, a couple of times you've been in the industry for a long time working with clients and these high-end luxury brands. How does that translate to you working with like these independent boutiques and creating their websites for them? That That's really my past experience is really useful in terms of project management because having worked for so long on multiple projects, I mean, obviously for me, it's also very important to make the whole process very enjoyable, very structured also, and very clear for, for my clients. So I take, I would say from the organization side of my past career, I take a lot into the, the project management. Obviously it's a completely different uh, scale and, and frame, but um, for me, it's, it's very important the same way. And that, that was the same uh, when I was working for brands to, to make my customer happy. It's, it's a bit of a, I guess, client oriented <laughs> mindset that comes probably from so many years. So that for me is key, is key. Yeah, that makes sense. Are there, are there any lessons other than like the visual aesthetics and the beauty of the fashion industry and the beauty of web design that tech could learn from the luxury fashion industry? Like any like work cultures, like philosophies about, I guess, life in general? <laughs> I think it's, yeah, it's more business culture. It's about communication is key. And, and that's particularly maybe important for web designers and developers because it's not something that will come naturally as a requirement to them due to also the nature of the work being in front of a computer. But at some point, if you want to pre present your project and, and to actually share with even like networking or, or share with other people, uh, I think it's important that to realize that communication is, is a key pillar of what you do, whatever your, your industry and your activity, including web dev and web design. Do you still work in fashion right now or are you kind of all web development? I, I do. I still have a part-time permanent mission with a, with a brand in London, but it's a, it's a nice smaller brand that is more about like long-term style and, and, and quality than fashion shows and crazy hectic uh, rhythm. And it, it's a smaller structure than the one that I've uh, worked with previously. So this is actually a nice balance because I've got a small team of like 10 people uh, the whole brand will like about like 50 people uh, all together. And I, okay. I do enjoy actually do, um, working for them in, in parallel um, still in my old world. But that's because I've got this, um, this activity of web design and development on the side where I can challenge myself, learn things new. I'm, I'm more than happy to share more and to uh, basically manage teams on the in a different environment also on the side. Do you ever plan to transition into tech full time in the future? Yes, but with my own business, not working for a big company. Why is that? Is there, is there a reason why? Is it freedom? Uh, yeah, it's freedom because I've worked 25 years for big companies. <laughs> so I, I, it's time to do something different. <laughs> what will you do with that freedom that you, that you can gain from working for yourself? Choosing the clients I want to work with, owning my time, living exactly where I want to live. If I want to work from Tokyo, I can. <laughs> I know it <laughs> sounds like it. <laughs> yeah. That's always in the back of my mind. <laughs> I did the whole boot camp on a laptop for that specific reason, because I want to be flexible. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, it <laughs> makes sense. I know you mentioned earlier that you were traveling, like taking three flights a week. How has your lifestyle changed now that you can run like your life remotely rather than always on the road or in the air? <laughs> well, I've got a little dog. That sums it all. <laughs> <laughs> I know you had a lot of passion for web development when you were getting your website designed. Did you have any doubts though? Um, or how did you feel when you were transitioning into um, the web development field? 
Well, I'm still at the beginning of the path, but what the triple 10 experience proved me and showed me is that if you want to learn something, if you want to find a solution for something, if you, if you put the work and your energy into it, you will get there. So I didn't have any doubt that I, if I wanted to do that or not. No, that, that was a chance I had is that I really felt genuinely excited. So I had the, the willpower. I had also a strong why, let's say, because that was, and that is still to master my time, to master my freedom. And this is a big willpower driver for, for me. Obviously, every time I'm, I'm doubting or I'm struggling with learning something new, if I just think about that, then I'll just continue. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. This is exactly the way it works. Like I need a bit of passion and I need some understanding of, of why I'm in a certain position and pursuing a, a certain goal. I know you said earlier, you said you're pushing, you're pushing 50, don't look it. Um, but there's people that's been in industries for like 20, 30 years and like they would never even consider like switching industries because like they, they know one thing, they may not love it, they may love it. What is some like advice or um, I guess things you would tell them to like that? Because you, you still love your industry. You still love fashion. Oh, yeah, I still love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still love fashion. Even if it's not as exciting as in the 80s, I still love it. <laughs> <laughs> I still look at it. <laughs> well, uh, I think it's all the more important to, to question this once you get older. It's fantastic. It's, it makes you feel young again, actually, to start something new. So uh, I would say as an advice, if you ever are afraid or are feeling you're getting old or like if, if you lose indeed a bit of your enthusiasm, uh, yeah, that's exactly why you should start something new. It's definitely important to question things. By all means, once you reach a certain age. <laughs> when you look at potentially going full time into tech, does it feel like you're downshifting from like your luxurious career in fashion, or does it feel like you're just living like the life that you kind of want to live? Uh, second option, <laughs> living the life I want to live. Yes, definitely. At this definitely. time, because I'm, I'm, I'm not. I had a fantastic time in fashion, also with those crazy travels and those crazy fashion shows. That, that's the life I wanted to live at that uh, point. I think the world is changing. I am changing. And it's again, it's important to listen to yourself. At that moment, what I want is more like freedom. I guess the main lesson here may sound cheesy, but it's never too late to make a shift and learn something new. Something that gives you a new perspective on things and allows you to live your life to the fullest. For Isabel, it was tech. Maybe it's tech for you too. In the next episode, we'll explore the reality of changing your career when it directly impacts the rest of your family. To be exact, five nieces and a bunch of adults all living under the same roof. This podcast was brought to you by Libo Libo Studio in partnership with Triple Ten. If you like our show, share it with your friends and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to our show. For more tech career tips, go to triple10.com slash blog or simply follow the link in the episode description. Tune in next week.